What's up YouTube, Jay here, and in this video I'll be showing you how to run the Llama AI model from Meta, free, locally, on your own computer. Like I mentioned, this is built by Meta, um, and they've licensed this model for free, including for commercial use, um, with some limitations, so you can't use it to do illegal stuff, and then you have to display a message built with Llama on a website um, that's related to the app that you built. Now I'm not a lawyer, so if you're adding this to your own app, make sure to read through their uh, documents on how to properly use this for your app. With that said, let's start jumping into the video. So the main model we're gonna be working with today is Llama 3.2. And to do that, uh, we'll need a few tools starting off. So you're gonna need Docker uh, and some tool to make HTTP requests such as curl, postman, wget, any of those will work or some other HTTP client will work as well. If you want to install Docker, I've got a link on my website. I've also got this whole, uh, all the information I'm going to share today is on my website. If you prefer to read through it in that text format, um, go for it. If you want to copy code, highly recommend that I'll include a link down in the video description. So if you need to install Docker, you can go to the docu Docker documentation and do that. You can also install curl for many different operating systems from this website. Once you have those two tools set up, we're going to first run an Olama container, and this is a container built by Meta, and it's basically a wrapper around AI models. So you run Olama, and then inside Olama, you can install different models, and then you can query those models similar to how you would with ChatGPT, either through a web interface, which we'll eventually get to that looks pretty similar to ChatGPT, or you can query it directly with HTTP, or you can use a node library or other libraries to interact with it programmatically. So with that said, let's hop into the demo. So this Olama Docker image is available in the Docker Hub. You can check it out here. To start the container, we'll copy this command and run it. And what this is doing is it's gonna pull down the Docker image. It's gonna run it. It's gonna detach from it. It's gonna set up a Docker volume. And my understanding is that this is to prevent you having to pull the Llama images every time you run the container. It's gonna open up port 11434 and then give it the name Olama. And then here is the image tag that we'll be using from the Docker Hub. This could take a few minutes because as you've noticed, it's a couple gigabytes of data. So I'll rejoin once this finishes. All right, there we go. The image is finally downloaded. And it should be running too. So here in Docker PS, we should see here it is running up 14 seconds, uh, or created 14 seconds up 10 seconds. And there's the port forwarding. So we've got that running, and we'll also see the Docker volume that we created if we run Docker volume list. And here we can see this Olama, this new volume. And now that it's running, we can check and see which models are installed, which by default will be no models. So there we go. We have this empty array that gets com that comes back. Um, if you did have models installed previously, they would have been stored in this Docker volume. And when you rerun the image, it would automatically uh, find those models and you wouldn't have to reinstall them. But in this case, since we had no models, we can install one. And there are a few different ways to do this. Um, and there's a lot of different models that you can install. So if you want to look at the different models, you can check out this site on the Alama website, or this page on the Alama website. And then to install any of these models, you need to get the name of the model and you can either make an API request uh, with the name of the model. Another option is you can run the command Olama run Llama 3.2 and that will install the model. Or you can execute into the container and run a bash script or bash uh, shell, and you can run the Olama run Olama 3.2 uh, in order to do it. So any of these three options would work. Personally, I kind of like this because you don't have to connect to the container or anything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this just to show you what it will look like. So basically what we have, run Docker, the exec command, interactive, and that's the container name and bash is the command that we want to run in the terminal. In this case, that will just open a shell for us. And then once we're in here, we can run 
llama run llama 3.2 or any other image name that we want to run and you can see it'll pull this down again it's like two gigabytes so this will take some additional time so we'll pause here while this runs and there we go a few minutes later we've pulled down a lot of data and we should have our tag in there if i control by to exit out of that and if i exit out of the doc container i should be able to rerun that tags command and now we see we have llama 3.2 model installed and now let's call the model and we can do that by running a curl command and what we're doing is you know we're passing the url slash api slash generate and then we're passing some data which creates a post request and we're passing the model which is llama 3.2 we're passing it a prompt and then we're setting stream defaults and i'll show you what that is for in just a second um, it kind of simplifies the response that we get a little bit so let's go ahead and run that it'll take a little bit of time that's one thing that um, i didn't set up i didn't connect my gpu to the model which would uh, speed it up quite a bit and get response times that hopefully would be closer to a chat GPT response time. Uh, but I haven't gone through the effort to do that yet. But if you do use Olama and the Llama models and you do want to increase your performance, make sure you connect it to your GP, GP, uh, GPU. So there we go. We said, tell me a joke about AI models. We've got a lot of extra metadata and then here is the actual response that it gave us why did the ai model go to therapy because it was struggling to process its emotions get it uh which arguably is a joke um but that's the response we got and let me remove this stream bit for a second and you can see what that will look like oops So if I remove the stream, ah, gotta close my parentheses. Now you'll see it's streaming the data back to us in multiple uh, responses. And so if you were building a UI and you wanted it to appear as if the model was typing out word by word, similar to how ChatGPT I think tends to do it, um, you could use this stream. But if you just want a single request and a single response, you can add that stream false to it. Um, but here you see, this is with the stream. Why did the AI model go to the go to therapy? It was struggling with its layers of emotions. Get it? Which you could say is a joke. I don't know that I'd agree with you, but apparently uh, Llama thinks it's a joke. Oh, and here's the example with stream set default. So I didn't have to modify that myself, but whatever. Um, so that's one AI model, the, you know, Llama 3.2. And then you can add other models. And again, you can add this model. You'll need the name. This is for some kind of code generation model. Or you could run Docker exec. I'll show you what it looks like from the curl. I'll run that and it kind of shows you the total that it needs and where it's at currently. All right. And it's finally finished pulling that, uh, that AI model, and it took about 10 minutes, uh, which was quite the wait, and that will obviously depend on your internet speed. So now if we run that same tag command, which seems like my terminal's having some issues, but if we run that same tag command, which we can pop over here, now we should see two AI models. One should be the Quinn coder, and then the other one is Llama 3.2, which we saw earlier. And we can query this new model too. And notice that the difference here is that we're specifying the Quinn coder model instead of the Llama 3.2 model as we did before. Paste that in. Asking it to write a JavaScript function to calculate the Fibonacci sequence. We'll see if it's uh, if it responds with a valid answer, but I guess this is also as good time as any to mention that running these AI models locally does take up quite a bit of RAM. And you can see Docker's actually taking up 16 gigs of memory, which is probably what I have it set to as the limit. And it's currently taking up 83% of my CPU. And of course, if I had my GPU set up, 
then it'd actually be using some GPU. But as it is, I don't know what's using my GPU, but it's kind of interesting. It says 20% and doesn't attribute anything to the GPU. But if I had GPU set up, then the GPU would be taking the load and the GPU would be much faster. And here we go. Here's our response. You'll notice that our response has new lines specified with slash in, but if I come in here and grab the beginning of the response to down here, the end. So it does calculate 55. What about for one? What about for two? Nice. Okay, and if it's less than one, it just returns in. Okay, sure. Uh, that's probably a different edge case than you would want, but more or less, it seems to have generated a mostly valid JavaScript function to calculate the Fibonacci sequence. So that's all fine and good, but it's a bit of a pain to make requests using curl and get the response back in this format where, you know, we have to remove the ends. It looks like gibberish. It's hard to read. So wouldn't it be nice if we had a UI that we could use instead. And fortunately, there is a UI that we can use instead. And that is, or one of those options is Open Web UI. So here's a list of community built integrations. You can scroll through them, take a look. They're linked in this article. The one we're using is going to be Open Web UI, which is free open source tool. And to run it, all you have to do is run this Docker command. And what it's going to do is we're Docker running, detaching, opening up port 3000 and forwarding that to port 8080 inside the container. We're setting up networking, setting up a volume called Open Web UI for some storage, giving it the name Open Web UI, and then pulling the image from GitHub container registry and running it. So we'll run this. We'll pull the image similar to how we did with uh, Olama although much faster because it's much smaller. And I'll rejoin you once it finishes. And there we go. We've pulled the open web UI image and extracted it and it should now be running. If you're in Docker PS, we can check on that. And now we'll see we have the Olama container that we ran before still running. And we have the open web UI container that we just started. Uh, it's now been up eight seconds. And we also have a new volume, the open web UI volume. And now that you've got that running, you can go to Loquist 3000 I had to give it some time uh, to start up, but once I give it some time, Locos 3000 loads up and lets me log in, create an admin account, and there we go. And now we can make requests such as, tell me a joke about Facebook. It seems like these models love to say get it after telling a joke. You can switch to use the other models that we installed earlier. And you can query it just like you would with ChatGPT. And you can notice as it's streaming, it's returning word by word responses. You can tell it's using this, uh, the stream true, and it's returning a stream when it's uh, returning our values. You can also create new chats. I'm guessing it saves the context between chats. I haven't played around with it too much, but it looks similar to ChatGPT. In this video, I showed you how to run the Olama Docker container. I showed you how to install some AI models in the Olama container, which were Llama 3.2 and Quinn 2.5 coder. I also showed you how to query the different AI models, both using curl through the terminal and also uh, by running Open Web UI to give us an easier interface with the AI models. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a like so more people are, are more likely to see it. If you like what you saw and would like to see more like it in the future, make sure to subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.